Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In previous video, we have seen that how to create this application and also these different fragments and connect it to these buttons. Okay, so if you haven't watched that video, then just go to description there. I put the link for my previous video. In this video, what we are going to do is we are going to set up the database as well as we are going to set up the fingerprint authentication. If you have enabled the device, then we are going to use that in order to log in into our application. And the secondary thing is that is the setup of the password so both we are going to do in this video and as well as the database setup we are going to do in our project so let's start quickly with that let me stop the project for now or stop the app for whatever we can say okay so first thing what we have to do is we have to move back over here and here we have to create one folder or package we can say so i'm going to come over here click on new and select package and inside this one i'm going to give it a name that is model inside this model i'm going to create class java class and i'm going to give it a name that is date converter okay so this one we are going to create one method that is public static and it will return a date date Inside this one, I'm going to get a long time stamp. And what it will do is simply return time stamp is equal to equal to null. In that case, we are going to simply return the null value. Else, we are going to create a new date. And inside this one, we have to pass the time stamp. And this will convert the long value into the that date. Okay. After that, uh, into this one, that is type converter. We need one more method that is basically return the uh, time in the long format. So that will be public static long to time stamp. And so this one we are going to pass the date and this will simply return date is equal is equal to null. In that case, what we are going to do is we are going to return simply now this is a ternary operator which we are using. If you are not aware of it, then just let me know in the comments so that I can create a separate video for this. Okay. And again, I'm going to use one more same annotation that is type. Okay. After this, what we are going to do is we are going to create one another class that is the key. So let me create that Java class and I'm going to give it a name that is key. Into this one, this will be an entity. And I'm going to give it the table name. So table name and uh, be able to use it a key DV. So uh, these all entities we are going to access because these are annotation, all annotation we are able to access because we have already added the dependency for this room DB. Okay, so that's why we can use these annotation in the first video. You must have observed that. Okay, and this will implement serializable because uh, it may happen that we have to transfer this over the net. So I'm mean, serializable away. After this, we have int ID is equal to zero. And this is primary key. And then this one, this is going to generate it is equal to true. After this, I have the column that is key. This will be at the rate column info. And so this one we have to pass the name is equal to key. After this, we have Boolean. Uh, this is message backup. We are going to use uh, this column in order to in the setting in the quick overview video, you must have seen that we have enabled and disabled the message backup. So this key is going to be used for that purpose. Okay. So at the rate column info, inside this one, we are going to pass the name is equal to message backup. After this, we have one more column that is Boolean, that is security. At the rate column info, inside this one, I'm going to give it a name. That is security. In the quick over video, I've also shown you that uh, we can enable the disable the security of the application. So with this Boolean key, with the help of true and false, we are going to use it over. After this, what we have to do is we have to add constructor over here. So build and insert in order to uh, create a constructor. We need one empty constructor and one with the key. This one and click on OK. We have one uh, constructor over here and one empty constructor I want. Public 
key like this. And I need get a setters for all. So alt insert, get a setters, select all and click on OK. And here you can observe that get a setters for everything is created over here. Okay. Next thing what we have is we have to create one another class that is for message. So right click on this, this one, select Java class, click on this and give it a name, message. And so this one, this will also implement serializable. And for this one, the entity will be, table name will be messages because we are also going to store the messages. Okay, so we are using two tables. One is uh, basically to perform some operation like uh, backup enable or disable security. And this is basically to store the messages. If uh, the message backup is enabled, in that case, we have to store the message. Message will be key value pair. So this is what uh, we have designed. Okay. So here we still we have one ID is equal to zero. And again, at the rate primary key inside this one, we are going to pass auto generated is equal to true. After this, we have another that is string P text. P text means plain text. At the rate volume four. And inside this one, I'm going to give it the same name. This is the name where it will be in the database. Level. Okay. After this, we have one more stuff that is encrypted text at the right column. You can give any name for your choice. Okay. So make sure if you change the name, in that case, just use that name throughout the application. Encrypted text. This is just for learning purpose. Any other use is totally done. Okay. So next thing we have date when this message is created. So creation time is that this one I have to use this column info and said this one we have to pass the creation okay after this we have one type converter which we have created that is type converter converters and said this one we are going to pass the date converter dot class which we have created okay this one which we have created, we have to pass it over here. It will automatically convert long to date. Okay. Next thing what we have is we have to create one uh, empty constructor. Or we can say zero hour constructor. After this, I need one constructor which will take all the values. Uh, these three because ID is auto generated. So click on OK and here you can see this plain text, encrypted text and creation date and time. Now this one is created. After this, we have to create the getter and setters. So select getter and setters. I have pressed Alt and insert, and then I have select these all and click on OK. And you will get like this. After this, what we have to do is we have to create one new package that is down. Right click on this, click on this one, select a package, create one down. Inside this one, I'm going to create one new package that is a new class. Select this one, select interface, and I'm going to create one new interface that is key DAO. Click on enter and it will create it like this. So this one, I'm going to put one annotation that is DAO from the library for sure. After this, we have some stuff which we need to perform like white and we have to perform save item, right? And which item we want to save, that is key. Like this, alt and insert, it will import and which it will import from model, which we have created, right? Form.bdb.hiddlevideo.model. So in the model, we have this key. So that's what we have imported. This is for the save item. Okay, so we have to save item in that one. We have to use this insert. And in this one, we have to put some values like on conflict, what I want to do. I want to replace it. So I'm going to use that. Alt insert and it will import like this one. After this, we have few more queries. Let me quickly write that list and we have key get all key. Move back over here, alt enter and import java.util.list. Okay. After this, inside this one, I'm going to write the query and the query will be select start from key D, which we have created, right? If we move back over here, this one, this is the database name. So which I'm using in that query. So move back over here, here you can see this key DB, right? So this will fetch all the 
records from the eDB. Okay. After this, uh, we have to delete. So it will be integer delete all key and we're going to use a query delete from key db in this way you can write the queries move back we need few more uh, one is to update to void change key into this one we have to pass the id and string my key whatever the new key you want to update and i'm going to write the query for the same so update key db set key is equal to colon my key whenever we use this colon and pass the, this value will be assigned over here whatever the value inside passed over here into this one will be passed into this one where where id is equal to colon id this is the id which will be assigned over here okay after this we have to write one more stuff that is enable and enable so enable this will also return nothing white enable disable and to this one we have to pass id and boolean status and again we are going to write one query for the same let me make some space over here. Into this one, we have to simply type update keydb keydb set message backup is equal to colon status where id is equal to colon id. After this, we have one more that is enable and disable security that will also return nothing. The method name will be enable disable security. Inside this one, it will accept host of that is ID Boolean status. At the rate query inside this one, I have to write update pdb set security is equal to colon status where id is equal to colon id like this now the task over here is done let me just check these empty lines okay so task into this one is done in the same way we have to create one message job so whatever the query is required we need to perform on the message db so we are going to create that java class select interface and to this one we have to select message top Hit enter, it will create one. Into this one again, we have to put the annotation that is DAO. After this, what we have to do is we have to create one save. First. So it will return nothing and it will method we will come save item and set this one, we will accept message message symbol. And at the rate insert or insert, whenever it's conflict, just replace it. After this, we have get all messages. So we are going to uh, do that. So it will return list of messages. Alt and enter and report class. Get all messages. And we have to write the query for the same. So query like this one. Select star from messages and we need and by order by like the recently which we have encrypted it needs to be on the top for that order by creation time descending okay next thing we have to delete also the messages so delete to this one it will accept a message object and we have to simply put the annotation delete and it will delete it Next thing we have one more that is void delete all messages. And now for this one, I have to write the query delete from messages and we delete everything within that. So now we have done all the tasks for key DAO and message out. Whatever the queries are required, I have written it down. 
Okay, so if you change the name, make sure you also change over here. And if you don't need this by descending, if you want that first message needs to be on the top, so you have to simply change this to ascending order. But I'm going with the descending order. Okay, next thing what we have to do is we have to create the utility method that we are going to use for the authentication purpose. So first I will create one package and give it a name, utility. Hit enter and now the method is created. Inside this one, first I will create one interface. So with one this Java class select interface and here I'm going to give it a name that is authentication. Authenticator task. Okay. Hit enter. So this one simply we have to create two abstract methods that is public void after validation success and another is public void on validation failed. Save it. After this, we have to create one utility class. So click on this, right click, click on this Java class, BD utility. You can name anything as per your choice. Hit enter, this will create one class. After this, I'm going to keep one utility method over here, which will basically whenever we, in people, you also have seen that when I click on copy to clipboard, it's copied to the, whatever the text or encrypted text is over there, it copied to the clip clipboard okay of the device so i'm going to write that method so that will be public static void set clipboard inside so this one it will accept one context and one text if sdk underscore end Okay, this one, we are going to use it. You can simply copy this. You can paste it over here. Android.os.build.version. This one is less than this, not this one. Version underscore boots dot honeycomb. This one, like this. This is not uh, uh, like imported like that one. Okay, after this, what we have to do is we have to check that Android dot text dot clipboard manager clipboard is equal to Android dot text dot clipboard manager context dot get system service so this one we have to pass context dot clipboard service and after this we have to simply close it and after this i'm going to simply type clipboard dot set text and inside this one i have to set the text if this is not the case then what we have to do is this android dot context dot clipboard manager we will get a clipboard manager object clipboard is equal to android dot context dot clipboard manager context dot get system services context dot clipboard service this one and android dot context dot clip data clip is equal to android dot context dot clip data dot new plain text inside this one we have to simply show copy text and what are the text over here just close it clipboard dot set Every clip and so this one we have to pass the clip and this will copy the text to the clip okay so now the task into this one is done next thing we have to go to uh, utility and we have to create one new class so right click on this click on this one select class and here we have to create one class that is 
फिंगर प्रिंट ऑथेंटिकेटर Get into it will create a new class. After this, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of the objects like biometric prompt. This one. After this, uh, biometric prompt. Info. Parametric prompt dot prompt info. Okay, like this one. Just a bit. Android X biometric. We have to select this one. This import Android X biometric. Then you select this. Then you will get this option. Okay. Next thing we have view. Give the name layout. After this, we get uh, need to get the context, and we need to get the authentication task. Okay. After this, I need to we need to create one constraint which will accept top three values. So select this one. Um, we need context, authenticator task, and layout. Click on OK, and this will create a view like this. Okay. So let me just move this one over here, view group, and this view group at the end. Like this one. Now the value is assigned. Here you can see this. So whatever the value will be passed into this one will be assigned to layout, context, and authenticator task. Next thing what we have to do is we have to create one method below this one that is public void add authentication and here what we am going to do is a biometric manager biometric manager is equal to biometric manager dot from and we will pass the context to this. after this we have to use the switch let me just scroll down, make some space over here. Yeah. Okay. We will use switch over here and path biometric manager dot can authenticate and just open it. Case bio biometric. Just a minute, guys. Uh, this one by biometric manager dot can authenticate. We have to type biometric dot v underscore error underscore no hardware. Okay, let me just import it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I made a mistake over here. A M A G E R, like this one. Okay. So now this one is good. After this, we have another case that is case. Uh, let me just copy this one and paste it over here. Dot biometric hw unavailable. Oh, this is colon boots. Sorry, yeah, colon. Next thing we have another case. So let me over here, so case biometric manager. This one enroll to this one have to make a toast. Dot make toast into this one. We have to pass the context and uh, no fingerprint 
have assigned you can change the text as per your choice post dot length short dot show and authentication task dot after validation says we will break it okay. after this what we have to do is executor executor we will use executor equal to on context text compact yeah compact dot get main executor and say this one we will get from the we need to pass the context after this we have to show the biometric prompt is equal to new biometric prompt and set this one we have to pass the fragment activity and we will pass the context to this one executor convert the context to fragment activity it will pass new biometric prompt parametric prompt dot authenticate request or authenticate callback we have to use okay after this what we have to do is after this we have to simply open and close the curly braces and just close this one so let me just move back and just hover over this one we have to cannot be initialized okay so new biometric prompt so this one we have to Authentication callback. Hmm. So, this one you need to create a few methods. Let me just undo it. A metric prompt authentication callback. Hover over this one. Okay, let me move back to this one. Okay. Let me just type it manually then in that case. So like this, close it. Okay, now the error is gone. Save it. And over here, what we have to do is we have to override some of the methods. So it override. And to this one, we have to use public void on authenticate error. Authentication error. So this one we have to use int error code at the rate non null it will be cat sequence error string like this one super dot on authentication error we have to pass the error code to this one and error string to this one and we have to simply pass authentication task dot on validation field okay next thing we have to uh, override two more method that is on authentication succeed and on authentication failed okay so that will be public void on authentication succeed dead into this one we have to pass uh, except non label biometric prompt dot authentication result and we have to accept the result into this one and we will call super dot authentication succeed we have to pass the result and authentication task dot after validation success and we also need to put the read override over here now save it after this check like this okay so when you type something uh spelling mistake into this one then it will show error over here that overrided method is not there move after this alt insert and let me just try overriding method and this one on authentication field okay so if i click on this here you can see this on authentication field is over here super dot on authentication field is over here uh, if authentication fail then i'm also going to show a toast so context and i'm going to show authentication failed okay after this what we have to do is here we have to prompt info is equal to new 
biometric prompt prompt info dot builder dot set okay let me just click on this one back over here this is prompt info new biometric prompt info okay not this is not required dot builder dot set set title and that is when we will set the validation dot set description and that this one i want to set like this use fingerprint to login you can use any text as per your choice set device credential allowed to true and dot build after this we have to simply use biometric uh, prompt dot authenticate and inside this one we have to pass like this one now the task related to this one the fingerprint authenticator the things which we need to implement over here is done so add authentication this method needs to be called whenever we use to want to add the fingerprint authenticator into our application next thing what we have to do is we have to create database right so go over here right click on this click on this one select one package and give the name the package that is database okay into this one i'm going to create a database um, class so click on this one i'm the name that is db hit enter and we'll create one class over here after this i'm going to create put an annotation that is at the rate database so this one we have to pass entities we have two that is one is message dot class and another one is key dot class we have two database right key dot class after this uh, we have to pass the version version is equal to one and export schema is false you cannot export this scheme okay after this this class this is an abstract class so public abstract class room db um, this will basically extends room database this one okay next thing what we have to do is to create this one that is private static room db and this is data base after this private static string database name and i'm going to give it a name that is hiddle db something like this okay after this we have to create one method public synchronized static and it will return a room db get instance and so this one we have to pass the context 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 like this one after this database is equal is equal to null then only we will create the new object or instance of that database okay as we will simply return the existing database so database is equal to room dot database builder inside this one we have to pass the context dot get application context comma inside this one we have to pass the room db dot class and inside this one we have to pass database name dot allow main thread queries dot fallback to destructive migration dot build this will create the object if this is not the case then simply return the database okay so what happened over here is suppose we have already the object is uh, not null in that case it will it won't enter into the safe condition simply to return the existing database object it means that for the first time only it will enter into this one and it will create the object of the database after onwards it will simply return this one okay so after this i'm going to create one few methods that is a uh, public abstract so we message dao main dao public abstract key dao this will be key dao like this the task related to this one is done after this what we have to do is we to move to the main activity because now the database is set up these all things to be 
get right. So whenever we need the database instance, we can simply call this get instance by passing the context and it will give us the database object. Now we can use it. We have also uh, created all the database queries which are required. We have also set up the database. We have also created all the models which are required. That is data, date converter, key messages, and the fingerprint task is done. Fingerprint authenticator, whatever that required for the finger, fingerprint authenticator is already in the place. Next thing what we have to do is we have to make all of these uses, right? So for that, we have to go to this main activity, main activity inside this. First thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the code for the back button. Here. Suppose if you want to click on back two times, then only it will ask for the exit. For that, I'm going to override one method. So alt and insert override method into this one. I will search on back pressed, hit enter, and this will give you a method like this. one. Let me remove this. After this, what we have to do is if I'm going to create a few objects over here first. So that would be private, static, and final int time underscore interval is equal to 2000. This is a milliseconds. Private, it will be long and back button press. Okay, if m back pressed plus time interval is greater than system dot current time seconds, then what we have to do is we have to exit the application. Okay, so activity Let me just put one more bracket over here. Just scroll up. And here we will pass main activity dot this dot finish. We have to call the method finish on this one. And this will close the main activity. And we have to close application system dot exit. And we have to pass zero into this one. This will close application. And super back pressed. And we have to simply return. If this is not the case, it means that but only first time when we uh, press the back button in that case one toast message we need to show toast this inside this one we have to show tap back button in order to exit or we can say tap back button again in order to exit okay if this is not the case and also we need to set the m back press button that is system dot current time millisecond that's it will be null for the first time, it will go run this one. Okay. So next thing, what we have to do is we have to write one more method that will uh, that is used to persist the keys. Because now, if you go into this one, KDB, you can observe it will be blank for the initial stuff, right? So what we have to do is initially we need to put one record into this one. That is by default security is disabled, backup is disabled or enabled, whatever you want to do in that case. So for that, just move back over here and we have to write one more method that is private void persist. Persist key like this one. And to this one, I'm going to use a try and catch block. So try catch. If exception ex if anything goes wrong ex dot print start okay here what we are going to do is we are going to get the shared preferences shared preferences is equal to preferences manager dot get default preferences inside this one we have to pass the context this after this shared preferences dot editor Editor is equal to preferences dot edit. After this, we will get the database uh, instance. Okay. So move back to the top, and here we will make some space, and it will be room db data base. Move back over here. Uh, data base is equal to room db dot get instance and we have to pass the context right so we have to pass this if not preference dot get boolean first time is false then 
In that case, what we have to do is we have to put like this key is equal to we will create object of new key. Shared preferences is uh, like suppose whenever you install the application, then once shared area will be there, it will keep the value get uh, first time is equal to true. We are going to set that into editor. Don't worry. Okay. So initially it will be false. First time it will uh, it will be false. And if this is the true, then not will make it uh, false. Okay. So if this one is false, then it will return true by using this one and it will enter into this if not. If and key dot set key, whatever the key if you want to set, like uh, like this one, alpha numeric, small caps, whatever you want, set. So make sure with this key only your encrypted data will be decrypted. Okay. This is just for the learning purpose, guys. Next thing, key dot set message backup. To this one, we have to pass it. Key dot set security. By default, I'm going to put the false over here. And finally, what I'm going to do is database dot key DAO dot save item and send we have to pass the key. Okay. Once this one is saved, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one editor dot put boolean first time to true editor dot commit. Whatever the changes I made, just comment it. If this is not the case, then we don't need to do anything. Okay, so now the task for this one is done. Next thing what we have to do is we have to move back to the top. Okay, so here we have this uh, database. Okay, next thing what we have to do is after this activity is loaded, first I'm going to create, call the method that is uh, persist key. After this, we have these two values. We don't need this one. I will show you when we need to choose it. We just commented that. After this, we need to put the try catch block. First, try catch. With this one, it will be exception ex ex dot print start trace and toast. So this one and whatever the error we get, ex dot get message that will be shown in the toast. Okay. Inside this one, what we have to do is we have to uh, use authentication task. Okay, so authentication task, authentication task is equal to new authentication task. And if you hit enter, here you can see this, we get some methods, right? That is the after validation success on validation failed. So into the success, what we have to do is we have to simply view this, one, right? So just paste it over here. Uh, relative layer dot set visibility is view is equal to visible. By default, it's visible, but now we will make it visible only when uh, the authentication is success. If it's failed in that case, what we have to do is let me just write it over here. So key key guard manager key guard manager is equal to key guard manager manager to this one get system system service into this one we have to pass the context context dot guard service if keyguard manager is keyguard secure in that case what we have to do is we have to simply write activity main activity dot this dot finish if keyguard is failing and simply exit the application so system dot exit and we have to pass this status code zero if this is not the case then what we have to do is we have to show the message toast make toast and main activity dot this phone doesn't contain password right it means that uh, what will be the case when uh, there is no password or nothing there in that case we also need to so toast dot length short dot show okay so what we have to do is we have to put this one over after this let's uh once validation is done we are into our application if this is we enter into this one then we enter into our application right and if uh, this is also uh, this is failed 
then it will not won't enter into this one and also it won't enter into this one so we continue the task over here so first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to get all the keys so list of key key list is equal to database dot key dao dot get auth key okay after this we will check boolean dot security boolean security is equal to key list dot get zero this is because we have only one record get security if this is enable if security then in that case what we have to do is fingerprint authenticator fingerprint authenticator is equal to new fingerprint authenticator inside this one we have to pass the activity that is main activity dot this and we have to pass authentication pass into this one and the layout so relative layout into this one. after this we have to simply call fingerprint dot authenticator dot add authentication to which we have created few minutes back into this one this method i'm calling over here okay if this security is enabled in that case we are I'm going to validate for by the fingerprint or the lock okay if this is not the case else in that case what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply type relative layout dot set visibility view dot visible okay so now the task is done. So let me start the application. Now we have added the validation as well as the database. Now the, these data, the key, initial key data is saved. So let's start up the application and let's check if everything works fine. Okay, cannot find parameter my key. Okay. So we made some mistake. So here K is caps. So key like this one. Now start the application. Now the application is started without any fail. Here you can see this, this one is running fine. Next thing what we are going to do is, I'm going to move back over here and let me just uninstall the application. App info. This is Hiddle video, uninstall it, click on OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back into this one, main activity and inside the security, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the true. And one more thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back over here, go to the setting of the phone, where it goes, setting, here we have. Secure your phone, uh, click pin, three, four. Next, so now I've set the pin into this one. Okay, so let me click on this one, open it, try to open it. It will ask for the pin, right? Okay, so now let me start my application. And this time, this set security is true. It means that before opening, it will ask for the validation. Here you can see this, use fingerprint to log in. You can change this message as per your choice. So if I click on back, back, here you can see this the application is closed again let me open it one two three four and five wrong password is there so it will show wrong pen and if i click on this one here you can see this we are logged in it means that our authentication is working fine so if i try change this one to false and now restart the application so again, it will ask for the password because this is not, this will only run for the first time whenever the application is installed. Okay. So uh, in the later videos, we are going to see how to uh, set these values true and false by the, from the UI Android application from the tools uh, as I've shown you in the quick, quick over video. So let me uninstall this one for now and let's try once again. Installing it and here you can see this directly opened over here. So that's it for this video guys. In the next video, we will start working on the home screen and after that one by one on the another. Okay. So just stay tuned, subscribe and share with your friends and thanks for watching.